In 2023, we sent out a survey to our newsletter readers and we asked them where do they work in Germany. We got over 500 replies. We confirmed what we had already suspected. 63% of international skilled workers worked in the seven largest cities of Germany, which include cities like Berlin, Hamburg, Dusseldorf, Frankfurt, Cologne, Stuttgart, and Munich. However, 37% of skilled international workers were scattered across all of Germany and sometimes in cities that even I had not heard of. In this video, we will explore the 20 top cities where international skilled workers are working that are outside of the top seven largest cities. We call them the underdog or hidden champions. Hey, my name is Jen and I'm from Guatemala. And mine is Yvonne and I'm German. And together we're from simplegermany.com, where we create English content to empower internationals to settle into life in Germany more smoothly. First, let's have a quick look at where the 63% living in the seven largest cities in Germany are distributed, just to be complete in this overview. And to no surprise, Berlin is the most popular city amongst international skilled workers, with 22% of our survey participants living and working there. Munich is the second contender with 13%, followed by Frankfurt with 7%, Düsseldorf with 6%, Stuttgart with 6%, Hamburg also 6%, and Cologne with 3%. I would say it's no surprise that Berlin and Munich are in the top uh, places because I think those are the two largest cities of Germany, right? Hamburg. Also. Hamburg as well. However, what's super cool is that I would have expected more people to live or, or work in Cologne, but more people work in Dusseldorf, so that's amazing. If you don't know, we live in Dusseldorf. And to be honest, when I was searching for a job in Germany, Dusseldorf was never in my radar. But I mean, I've been living here for the past 12 years and I love it. Now it's time to talk about the hidden champions. And to make it easier to visualize, we will talk about them from north to south and follow the map of Germany. Let's start with number one, which is Bremen. Bremen is actually a third city state in Germany. So Bremen is a city and a state, just like Hamburg and Berlin. And it is a quite a large also port town in northern Germany. Beautiful town, by the way, Bremen. Architecturally speaking. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Second one is Hanover. I would say this is a massive underdog and underrated city in Germany. In one video, I called it a town and I was corrected thousands of times. So I apologize for that. It is a city. When we visited Hanover, it's, it was actually very surprising how beautiful at least the city center area was. Very full of nature as well. And fun fact, it is actually the city probably with the hohest of the Deutsch, meaning um, clearest. the clearest. Uh, people there have almost no accent. Next up is Wolfsburg, also in Lower Saxony, Niedersachsen, relatively close to Hanover. And when I think of Wolfsburg, the first thing that comes to mind is that VW, Volkswagen, is headquartered there. Yeah. It's actually the only German car manufacturer that is not uh, located in the south. Now we go to number four, where we jump to NRW, or the Ruhrgebiet, to be more precisely. And as a fun fact, the Ruhrgebiet is the most populated area in all of Germany, which is crazy, right? I think because there's a lot of uh, smaller cities all condensed. And there well, was they a find lot of... smaller, right? Oh, if you yeah. look at Essen, Dortmund, they all have also half a million inhabitants. Hmm. But there is a conglomeration of medium-sized cities very, very close together, which leads to their very dense population, yes. Yeah, so that's very interesting. So number four on the list is Bochum, apparently a very also popular city to live outside of the top seven. Followed by number five, Essen. And there's a few more cities in the Ruhrgebiet, but that didn't make our list. Another thing about the Ruhrgebiet, it is generally known for being a very industrial due to its history of coal mining and you can still see a lot of industrial plants around. However, a lot of the cities have made a big effort to make the cities greener, yet it still has a little bit of the stigma of being grey and industrial. Number six is Bonn. Yay, I'm from Bonn, <laughs> Yvonne from Bonn, haha. <laughs> um, and it is in the southern area of NRW. Uh, together with Cologne and Düsseldorf that forms the Rhineland and I like Bonn very much. It's a very pretty city architecturally, a lot of nature, um, very cosmopolitan. Uh, it's a very nice city to live in. Yes, also the previous capital or the older capital of Germany was in Bonn. So there's still a lot of, I would say, very preposterous buildings in terms of architecture. Tons of museums. Yeah, tons of museums and still a lot of some festivals. of the government functions actually. Yeah. Number seven still in the NRW and it is Aachen and Aachen is actually very popular for being a student town. They have probably the best engineering, is it? Engineering University in all of Germany, which is the University RWTH of Aachen. ATW Aachen. A -T -W Aachen. R -R -W -T -H. <laughs> 
<laughs> said completely wrong. <laughs> Anyways, Aachen has a very beautiful also city center. A lot of people really like the Christmas market there. I visited once and I like the city center very much. Of course, we don't have a whole impression of the whole city itself, just the city center, but it's also very popular. What we can say about the Ruhrgebiet and the Rheinland or NRW in general, location-wise it's super convenient, uh, very close to the borders of the Netherlands, Belgium, Luxembourg, even France. So traveling to other cultures and cities like Amsterdam or Paris is quite convenient. With number eight and nine, we are moving across to the east and eight is the city of Jena in Thuringen or Thuringia, I would say in English. Yeah, I have no idea how to say it in English yet. <laughs> and to be honest, I cannot say much about Jena. I've never been and there is nothing that pops to mind. So it's a blank spot on my map. Yeah, but it made the list. So that's super interesting. Number nine now it's in the area of Saxony and that is Dresden or Dresden. Dresden, I find it a very beautiful city as well, architecturally speaking. It has a beautiful river crossing it and the city center, in my opinion, is super pretty. Yeah, it's super famous also for its history, also amongst Germans to visit it. It was rebuilt gorgeously. Uh, it has a lot of nature around it, yes. lakes, also climbing, like hiking areas in the Elbsandsteingebirge, uh, close to the Czech and Polish border, so also there a lot to discover. The next three cities are all in the vicinity of Frankfurt and offer great alternatives to Frankfurt, as this is actually the second most expensive city to live in in Germany when it comes to rent and cost of living. Let's start with Mainz. Mainz is in the state of Rheinland-Palatinate, Rheinland-Pfalz <laughs> in German, and is very beautiful as well. It's quite famous for its old town, also has some carnival celebrations, mm -hmm. which we sure. didn't mention when we talked about the Rheinland, um, and is a yeah, very nice town. City. Number 11 is Darmstadt and that is the in the state of Hessen and it's very close to Frankfurt and that's about all we know from Darmstadt. We have never been there so to be honest we don't know. <laughs> Same goes for number 12 which is Wiesbaden. It is again super close to Frankfurt. It's actually I think the state capital of Hessen hmm. and uh, that's it. I don't know what else to say about Wiesbaden. That skilled workers work there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep moving further south to the state of Baden-Württemberg, or also called The Land, as they like to call themselves. <laughs> and, and they launched last year or a couple of years ago, like a campaign on YouTube to attract more international skilled workers. And based on our survey, they succeeded because quite a lot of you actually live in The Land. Starting with Mannheim. And the only thing that I know about Mannheim is that the city center is arranged in squares and they don't have street names, but actually numbers like 1A, 2A, B, and so on. So it's easy to navigate. Number 14, still in Baden-Württemberg, is Heidelberg. Oh, beautiful Heidelberg. It is located very close to nature as well. The city center is very, in our opinion, hip. It has a very cool vibe. Well, it's hip yet historic. Yes, and also modern. And actually one of our insurance partners has their headquarters in Heidelberg, which is Get Safe. And yeah, I, I like the city very much. Number 15 is Karlsruhe. We're still in Baden-Württemberg. And Karlsruhe is super close, uh, or actually the gateway to the Black Forest, beautiful nature area, also super close to the French border. The, the whole wine region stretches amongst what the past cities that we said. So a very beautiful and interesting cultural area of Germany. Number 16 is Böblingen. Böblingen is still Baden-Württemberg. That's very sad. The region is really uh, did a good job in attracting international talent. And Böblingen is literally just outside of Stuttgart. Um, and offers a great alternative also, I would say, for housing costs, yeah. Number 17 is Freiburg, still in Baden-Württemberg. And Freiburg actually, according to statistics, is the sunniest place in all of Germany. Can you imagine that? Freiburg city center is also very beautiful. They're also notoriously known because they have this um, aggregation. aggregation system or these canals, that mini canals that go through the city center. And legend goes that if you like step in one, maybe, I think you're gonna marry a local or something like that. Also, it's one of the greenest cities in Germany, not only in terms because it's close to nature, but because they're very bike friendly. Um, that's all I know. <laughs> And location, it's actually a little bit further south than the other cities we mentioned in Baden-Württemberg, actually very close to the French and Swiss border. Uh, so again, fantastic if you're an outdoor enthusiast. Number 18 is Herzogen Aurach, which is located in Bavaria. However, in my opinion, I wouldn't really call it a city. It's more like a town. It only has 23,000 inhabitants. And I believe this is highly subjective. The reason why it made the cut is because the only thing that comes to my mind when thinking of Herzogen Aurach is Adidas. Hmm. Or oh, Adidas, as you say in English. They are based there, they have the headquarters there, and uh, I would say they pull a lot of international workers as well. Yeah, fair point. Super interesting. I could never say that name. Herzogen Aurach. Herzogen Aurach. Yeah. Did it. 
<laughs> and that leads to number 19, which is Nuremberg. Nuremberg is the second largest city in Bavaria and actually also quite close to Herzogenaurach. Nuremberg is super famous for its historic center, for the Christmas markets there. It's really beautiful, a lot of history, and um, also the area around it has a lot to offer. Yes, which leads to number 20, also in that same kind of area, and that is Ingolstadt. A little bit further south. A little bit further south, but still close enough. And that's also still in Bavaria. Ingolstadt has also a very beautiful city center. And also it's known because Audi has its headquarters there, right? So a lot of international skilled workers work in that area. I think that whole south of Germany area has a lot of car manufacturers. I was just going to say, not just the brands themselves, but also the, the distributors of car parts and stuff. Yeah. Yes. One important thing to mention about both Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg is that the German spoken there can be a little bit of an adventure. <laughs> they have quite a distinct, not only accent, but they also have very distinct words that they use. So just know that the Hochdeutsch might be a little bit harder to learn or implement there. I would, I agree with you, but I would say you can argue the same about other areas of Germany. I mean, you have dialects here in our area in the Rhineland, you have dialects in Dresden and Hamburg. So yes, you have however, dialects everywhere, but not as strong and distinct. I yes. was going to say, and not in my 12 years of living here, I have maybe once met a person in Cologne that spoke to me in Kirsch, which is a dialect. However, in Bavaria, I've heard multiple times Bavarian, which I am wondering, what did they just say to me? <laughs> so I would say the frequency that you interact with the language is, is higher in the South, in my opinion, at least. Could be very subjective. Fair point. This data is so cool because it really showcases that international working opportunities are not only in the largest city in Germany. On the contrary, there's a lot of smaller companies that we maybe not know the brand name right from the bat because they're not global brands that offer fantastic work environments. Another benefit of living in a hidden champion might be that cost of living is cheaper, especially when it comes to housing, rental prices might be lower and there might be more availability. This depends on the cities. Heidelberg is not really cheap as one exception. And another benefit that we always come across is that sometimes in smaller cities or not so known cities, there's also less waiting time at the Ausländerbehördes. So this might be a good reason to consider a hidden champion. We once got asked in a live stream, what are the best and worst places to live in Germany? And to be honest, to answer this question is very dependent. I could never say there's a worst or a best place to live because everyone has a different lifestyle, different needs, different perceptions. Some might enjoy the vibrancy of a big city like Berlin. Others might enjoy the peace and quiet of living in a mountainous town, village, close to nature. So it highly depends. So you need to consider what is the lifestyle that you're looking for and then choose where to live according to that. A lot of the times, I'm sorry, I have to say also that the job opportunity is what defines the place that you go to. So one has maybe sometimes the luxury of choosing cities, other times one just lands where the job is. This is how I landed in Dusseldorf. Me least. too. <laughs> if you would like to participate in such a survey in the future, then make sure to sign up to our newsletter. We usually send an email every Tuesday, not only asking you questions, we promise, but we write about things that I am still learning of living in Germany, hot tips, things that are happening in Germany that might be relevant or useful to you. And yeah, sometimes it's just a fun story or two. If you want to sign up, you can do so at Simple German com slash newsletter. We hope to see you in the next video. Until next time. Cheers. Okay. Energize. <laughs> in 2023, we sent out a survey to our newsletter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it has a beautiful river also caught. What?